Hey, Travel Baseball Coach Justin here going live. We're at the Memorial Day Tournament at Lithia Driveway Fields. Just want you guys to ask questions if you can. Um, I am here. Hey, Cheryl. We got Cheryl. We got Super Dave joined. Ask questions if you want. Oh, my God. We got a bunch of people popping in now. All right. Okay, guys, what we're doing here is this is a Memorial Day tournament here in Medford, Oregon. I'm watching uh, the elimination bracket uh, game four versus five here. It's North Medford uh, 11 U versus the Junior Falcons out of K Falls 11 U. And the winner here plays us, uh, the Southern Oregon Generals, tomorrow at nine. And we are the number one seed, so I'm just kind of doing this live for the very first time. Guys, ask questions. Um, let's see here. Um, see here mark paul's mp3 you guys probably know him he's that baseball dad over there in uh, kentucky who uh does all those uh, beautiful skits funny skits he's that funny baseball dad he's a co-owner of solaro shades uh, so mark if you want to send me a pair i want the cotton candy um reach out to me We're, we've been messaging back and forth but if somebody can send this video to him i'm not going to but uh, mark if you send me a pair i'll buy a pair uh, that's a fair trade. I, I, the pair I'm gonna buy would be the Grifter Green, the Green uh, the Green Gamers. Sorry, the Green Gamers. If you send me those cotton candy um, Solaro shades. But anyway, getting on here. Um, please, somebody ask me a question. Engage. Uh, there's a ton of you on here. Um, so for those of you who just joined, uh, we're waiting for uh, the bracket game between seed four and seed five to begin the winner of this game plays the southern oregon generals my team uh, tomorrow at nine we are the first seed in this uh, memorial day tournament here at lithia and driveway fields in medford oregon it's 82 out it's like yeah, another four or five minutes before this game starts um let's see here what is this anyway um there we go tiktok stars share oh. anybody ask me a question oh hey um also my uh, ba uh, t uh baseball card here i got one out of a hundred of these um i want to do a shout out to uh dakota is ugly seven that's the handle on tiktok you have he plays for the Red, Redwood Giants. His team's here, but he's not playing today or this weekend because he broke his shoulder. Um, Dakota, if you can uh, call out to one of your fellow players on your team to come by um, between fields four and five here, and here's your baseball card that I was going to give you. Um, if not, then have somebody come by our game tomorrow and uh, stop by at 9 a.m. That's our first game. Hopefully we win that and move on to uh, game two. Um, still don't see any questions unless I have to hit something, but I don't think I do. But, let's see here. All right. Um, since you guys are watching, I brought this. You guys see my travel hack uh, video with the bucket down at Golden Sparks Eagle, uh, Eagle Complex. You don't have to do that here at Medford. Um, what's nice about Lithia Driveway Fields, they let you in with your cooler. Uh, they, just, they don't even check. There's nobody at the gate. There's nothing. So in here, obviously, um, my wife got this for me for my birthday because she thought that white cooler was just too small and clunky with a sling over the shoulder. This is a backpack type cooler. All right. But of course, as you well know, you've seen that travel hack. I got my cheese, my protein, and my energy. Okay. Oh, it's not. It's TikTok telling me to encourage you guys to uh, um, share this live feed and that kind of stuff. So anyway, we're going to figure this thing out. In this game, they're, they're going with number 30. And again, um, anybody know? Um, <clears throat> let's see. If you just joined, uh, the Generals, my baseball team, is the number one seed here in the Memorial baseball team is the number one seed here in the Memorial Day Tournament and the team behind me is in bracket play. The winner of this uh, game goes on. The loser is done for the weekend 
and uh, tomorrow's bracket play for the top four teams starts at nine. Then um, first and four starts at nine. Uh, seeds two and three is 11, and then the winners of those two teams play at one for the championship of the four game guarantee. We've got to play five to win it all. So, um, still no questions. Let's see here. Who has joined? We've got a ton of you on here. Um, a little closer here. Thank you for following. First and foremost, I'm glad you guys uh, follow me. <laughs> I hope I make sense in most of my videos as I'm documenting this team all the way through 18U. We're an 11U team. We've been together for two and a half years. Just to give you a little example, and we play year round. Um, none of our kids, some of our kids play basketball, but we're talking like uh, YMCA, you know, just like a Manny ball here locally in Medford. No travel ball, basketball, or anything. Uh, none of the kids play football. Hey, but there we go. Zach, question? Girlfriend is, well, maybe it's just TikTok trying to recommend something I do on the video live. Things just pop up and go away. Anyway, um, we've been together for two and a half years. Started during the year of COVID, looking for some nine new kids to travel anywhere from, you know, up to 300 miles away our first year. Uh, we went to Boise from Medford. That's an eight-hour drive. Uh, we went to Portland, of course. That's a four-hour drive. Uh, K Falls. Um, you got to remember, Oregon's a very big state for those guys. For those of you on the east side of the Mississippi, um, like South Carolina and all that kind of stuff, we could probably fit about seven of your states into one of ours. So when we travel and we stay within the state, we do travel a long way. Um, one of ours. So. When we travel and we stay within the state, we do travel a long way. Um, south, we've gone down as far as Sacramento, San, San Francisco, Mislin, Ripon, California. That's the uh, middle section of California. Uh, those are six and a half hours away. Um, and we've gone as far as uh, Vancouver, Washington, which is just over the Columbia River from Portland. Portland, the city of Portland pops up and gets the Columbia River. Just on the other side of that is Clark County or Vancouver, Washington. Playing a tournament there this year. If you've been following, you'll know that uh, in that tournament, my son threw a no-hitter in the championship game and didn't even know it until uh, there were two outs left in the fourth inning. Um, we were up against, we were up 9 nothing against uh, the E-Force uh, 11 U. I I think they were called the Yard. And then um, E-Force Expos, is that right? I don't know. My brain's, this is why I'm documenting, because I forget everything. So it looks like uh, they got a runner on third. Close to Medford, Oregon to come play in a tournament. We have nine baseball fields. Uh, fields uh, nine and six are 90-foot bases. Uh, fields one through uh, eight, except for six, uh, are baseball slash softball. They can go anywhere from 10U to... Um, 10U to 12U, and then uh, fields one and two can actually go to 80 feet and 90 feet as well. Um, but those are gonna be short 90 foot uh, base uh, fields because the fences are only 300 feet. Um, but anyway, they play the 13U and 12U on those fields mainly, which is interesting. And um, yeah, they have maintained. So if you've been to some places where they're not maintained, these are maintained. Uh, these are this is our home field. We enjoy playing here, but we've played all these teams over and over and over again. So we love to travel. I can't remember which. They force whatever uh, division you're in to go up. That's I can't remember which. They force whatever uh, division you're in to go up. That's their calendar year where you move up. So we will be playing like age teams just under the 12 U banner for perfect game. Uh, on that uh, in that tournament so if you look for the perfect game Everett Washington one we will be under the 12U section so if you look under the 11U we won't be there 12U we will be there so everybody who's a 10U team here in Medford would have to play 11U everybody who's 11U here in Medford would have to play 12U after July 1st or August 1st I forget what the cutoff is for perfect game it'll be our first perfect game tournament um, I think it's gonna be a great one because iron sharpens iron um, we have been last year we won a bunch of tournaments here we won a bunch, well we won nine of the nine of the we've been in 
We were in 21 tournaments last year. We were in 15 goal brackets, so the top level bracket. And out of those 15, we won nine. So um, with that being said, we won nine out of 21 tournaments at the highest bracket. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were, uh, I don't, oh, we were in the silver bracket one tournament when we were playing up as a 10U. We played 11U and we got uh, beat by a, a pretty good uh, Phoenix Talent Bucks team. Uh, they just ran the score up on us. Uh, we just we weren't playing, we weren't hitting. And then, you know, coaches, uh, you get that mental. Well, uh, they just blasted everybody. Uh, the 10U bracket, they won it. And so uh, this year they kind of struggled coming out of the gate. And uh, they took a big win away from that back because... I think they're. I think they're going to do it because uh, the third team, that, the third game they played uh, this weekend, joining and stuff. So hey, if you're joining and stuff. So hey, if you're joining, uh, this, you, this is for the three and team. And since we had the lowest amount of runs allowed uh, over here, Scott Wood Crush versus um, Northern California Wolfpack, and that is the number three versus number sixteen. And the winner of that game plays number two, the Junior Riverhawks, tomorrow at 11. So we're at, and they have over 100 uh, soccer teams down here this weekend. They're played at many, many fields besides uh, the sports complex. They play them at the high school and Fickner Manwaring Park off of Stewart Avenue and a lot of other soccer fields in order to handle all those age groups and teams. Um, but with that said, uh, we are uh, finding it that it's very busy here. Uh, normally, par normally parking's fine during our tournaments, but um, with the added overflow of the 100 soccer teams, it, uh, you know, gets busy. <laughs> anyway, let me t turn around and see what the score is. It is. Three to nothing, Junior Falcons against the number four, um, North Medford 11U. And I think we're going into the bottom of the first. I am correct. So, wow, three runs. That is a head head start. Uh, nothing that can't be made up at 11U. Certainly, I've seen uh, many games go from eight to two to nine to eight, or even worse, 12 to nothing, and then you end up losing 13 to whatever. So, with that being said, I'm gonna look at for any questions here. Um, I want to appreciate every single one of you who have joined. Um, shout out to Dakota. This is his handle. He's a he's a kid who plays on the red one of the Redwood Giants teams. He's been following me from the beginning, and his name his handle is Dakota is ugly seven. I, I I recommend you change it, but you know if you want to stick with it, it's your call. Uh, I got your travel baseball card, Justin uh, baseball card right here. Please uh, send over, um, he's not here today. He broke his shoulder, unfortunately. And so he's not playing in the tournament, but I was gonna reach out to him and say, hey, if you're watching me live, come over between fields four and five and I'll hand you your baseball card. Uh, if you wanna send a proxy over, somebody from one of your team, parent, player, whatever, just uh, t uh, message me through TikTok and let me know who you're sending over. Or send them over right now, you know, we'll just hand it to him live, I don't care. Um, because if somebody asked me for the baseball card, I'm going to be like, you're probably, you're probably on live, and, probably, and Dakota probably did cut. So, um, anyway, Dakota, get better. Hate to hear that you're sitting out, but whatever. Oh, darn it. Are these games? Yeah, these are. Yeah, what is that? Is that a question? Let me look. Hold on, guys. What is this? I don't know what it is. Something red flashing across the top there. I can't even join. Uh, this is travel baseball coach Justin. Um, if you've been following me, thank you. I'm documenting the uh, Southern Oregon Generals 11 new team. Um, why am I doing that? I'm just gonna create my own questions here. Uh, it was uh, January this year. I, I, I remember everything that happens in a game. We could play five games in a tournament and I can remember every scenario. It's weird. You start talking about the beginning, during, and I can fill in the rest. But during January, I was going through a lot of photos. 
and there, I came across a photo that I couldn't remember before and after. Uh, I recognized a, a parent in the background. I'm on third base, my son's getting a lead off, and I'm kind of smiling, and it's a black and white photo that um, friends of ours who were on the competing team, uh, Weston's grandma, Kim, she takes photos, and we, and Weston and Heather uh, were friends ever since they've been little. And when we compete, she always takes pictures of Adler when she takes pictures for the Phoenix Bucks uh, uh, team. She always takes pictures of Adler too and send them to me. And so I saw this picture in this photo dump and I couldn't remember anything. And so I went, man, if I only, oh, you know, if I took a video. And then I was like, well, videos take up a lot of space. And I don't want to have to buy, I mean, I got 64 gigabyte in my iPhone here. I don't have to buy, you know, a 300 gigabyte. Uh, memory for my phone and then a 200 terabyte for all the videos that I know I'd create if I documented everything and then I immediately thought of social media uh, YouTube I could post all my videos on YouTube I do have a YouTube channel um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram Facebook LinkedIn Twitter all those get all my videos I post them all I mainly do the uh, Facebook TikTok and Instagram those are the ones I post immediately. I can't seem to post onto my um, studio through my iPhone. Uh, maybe somebody can educate me or I can just go on YouTube and see if I can. Um, so I have to wait till I get home, link up to the computer to put the videos that I create on there. So those are always, if I'm on a away tournament, those are always gonna happen late Sunday night or Monday morning. Uh, so you'll see everything, Saturday pool play, recap, Sunday bracket, Sunday recap, that all come out. Saturday will come out. I usually delay two hours for the Sunday recap or half an hour or something like that. Um, and then, of course, I always uh, push from YouTube to Twitter and LinkedIn. So that way, anybody on there can find my YouTube channel and subscribe. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, so the baseball cards, I do want to say uh, I got to do a drawing from YouTube. I got my first 50 followers, and every 50 followers I get on my YouTube, I will be uh, randomly drawing a name and then sending that baseball card to you. I, I got a hundred of them. I numbered each and every one. That's just the 2023 series. I'll come out with more, of course, but this is the premier edition. I signed it with my number. Um, and of course it's got information on the back. And then that's me and my caricature for all my social media stuff. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a drawing um, tonight for the one drawing because I got 50 for uh, YouTube but I also did it for uh, Facebook and I, and I had 114 Facebook followers I'm now over 2200 so I have to do 44 I have to pick 44 draw out 44 winners um, I have 100 baseball cards so I got plenty for all that so I'm gonna do that tonight as well so I'll pull out what's that 45 winners um, I'm not doing a TikTok. Uh, I'll do uh, you know that's not true when I get to 2,000, what I will do for TikTok, because TikTok was the first social media that blew up uh, for me, is I'll wait till I get to 2,000. And um, my Instagram has 68 now or 70. I need to pick a winner for that as well for every 50. But when I get to 2,000 on TikTok, whatever, the remaining cards I have, I will just draw out um, the winners from the pool of my TikTok followers so you guys all have an opportunity as well to get in on this uh, premier edition travel baseball card just uh, coach Justin um, premier edition and so you guys have a chance to, to win one of these as well I've numbered each out of a hundred um, so I'll just grab one and mail it to you I don't care about the numbers one through a hundred you may get 100 out of 100 or one out of 100 to me they don't mean anything um, other than the fact that um, I get to send them to you uh, you guys who follow me, so I really do appreciate it. Let me turn around and see what the score is again between North Medford 11 U. Oh, there's an out. And, oh, hey, that was the third out of the bottom of the first inning. Junior Falcons are up 3 0. Um, I had a feeling that the Junior Falcons were going to put up a really good game today because this is game three for North Medford. Um, they won yesterday, and then they had two today. Whereas we had two yesterday and just one today. And so they lost uh, their second game. They were ahead 8-2 to two against um, the Junior uh, Riverhawks. And that team came back and beat 
and beat them. They challenged, they, they, they fought. The Junior River Hawks really fought. They came back and I saw that it was eight to seven in the end of the fifth inning. And then um, top of the six, North didn't put any runs up and the River Hawks were home team. They tied it and then they had a runner on third with two outs and guess what happens, pass ball. And so they, they walk it off by a pass ball and the guy on third scoring. So that was a tough loss for North, very tough loss for them. Um, and so uh, there, so what happens is now they would have been the number two seed because they would have, they would have given the Riverhawks a loss and they would have been two and one. And then North would have been the number two seed, but instead they're the number four seed, which then they have to come back again tonight which is the fourth game in two days, the third of today. And so I was like, oh my gosh, they played at uh, nine and 11. And then, which means they got off the field about one four, or anyway, that was December 3rd and 4th last year. We actually played four games on a Sunday. The ra we got rained out Saturday and they started us early, like at seven. And they got us all in, they had the umpires there. They did a really good job down there. I think it was really River City Travel Baseball. Uh, tournament organization that did that and man they were spot on uh, we are lucky uh, nine of our 11 kids are pitchers uh, the top seven are really decent um, we are a very uh, pitcher deep team uh, and so our, the first two years were like uh, playing with four pitchers basically and rotating the infield and when some pitcher catcher combination was up we'd be we'd have a negative deficit in the infield which costs you know that kind of stuff but now we just we have so many pitchers um, we have this situation where all of a sudden it's like the problem isn't um, who should we go to the problem is still who should we go to because it's like we have so many and so uh, our pitching coach Jason Minica who played for uh, Texas a for three years as a pitcher uh, he uh, he's got that duty of, <laughs> of uh, figuring that out with Antonio or our manager of our team who doesn't have a kid on the team. None, none of us coaches take any money. I'm the hitting coach and the third base coach. And then we have uh, Dan, who's our first base coach, uh, infield, uh, he throws BP along with Antonio. Uh, he's a workhorse. Uh, he does a lot, of, a lot of good things for the generals. Uh, his brother is in the A's organization. He's the well, first base, I think uh, right field now or center, left field. His name's Seth Brown, um, number 15 for the A's. He's played, this is, I think, his fourth year now. And so we're really hoping, you know, Seth uh, has a banner year here. Uh, we're always pulling for him because he helps out um, in the off season and he, he makes it so tangible for our boys to realize that Major League Baseball isn't that far away. As a matter of fact, there you go, the last two and a half years, Seth Brown has come in and he's helped with the boys hitting. Man, when he comes in and he hits, man, it's amazing how those kids listen. So if there's something I want certain kids to work on, I feed it to Seth and he tells them and boy, oh boy, guess what happens? They do it. <laughs> so I really do appreciate Seth Brown and all of his uh, labors when he comes into Medford um, in the off season. So uh, very fortunate for that because uh, Seth makes uh, Major League Baseball very tangible and he brings in um, the truth that's going on in Major League Baseball, like, you know, the, how hard it is to get there. Oh, by the way, on my podcast, if you guys don't know, I have a podcast. Uh, go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, or you can go to Spotify. Uh, I'm under Travel Baseball Coach Justin. Same as my handle here on TikTok. Uh, I interview him. He's in, he's in my fifth episode, uh, Seth Brown, and he talks about his journey from high school to the bigs. And it's a wonderful uh, one hour and four minutes with Seth. And uh, he just pours his heart out and everything. And he gets that in there. And, and it's just, it's amazing. And actually, there's one thing in that uh, uh, podcast that he said that his brother didn't know about. And it's really, actually, a really amazing thing. Because uh, as a first baseman last year, he got, anybody that was on first base, he got to talk to. So imagine in the American League, your favorite player on first base where Seth Brown was holding them on. So, and when they hold each other on, they always talk to each other. So he, uh, in that podcast talks about a, a big player last year, probably the biggest name last year. Yeah. You know who it is. And so you should uh, listen to that little story Seth Brown has. It's an amazing story. 
Anyway, um, did not know I was going to get that in the podcast, but I'm glad I did. Uh, his brain just went there after a, a, a very generic question from me, and that's what I try and do. So uh, if I reach out to you for a podcast, uh, all I do is just ask simple questions and I shut up. But uh, yeah, go to uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and um, you can see my five episodes there. Uh, been uh, dry for the last three weeks. I haven't done any um, episodes uh, recently. Those are coming up. It's just it's been a busy travel ball season. Um, but anyway, with that being said, uh, hit the other socials. Let me turn around and take a look at the score here. It was three nothing. Uh, Junior Falcons. Yep. Four nothing with one out. So, like I said, I had a feeling with North Point being in their third game on a hot and windy day, they may not show up. And uh, the Junior Falcons are, they got an edge, and I think they're going to ride this one out. Um, it's just my gut feeling uh, coming to the ball field that this was probably going to happen. Because um, last year, we had, in Tenu uh, was our last uh, Tenu tournament before moving up, and we played um, this North team in the Tenu Memorial Day Championship, and they edged just out 9-8. to eight. So... Uh, I talked to Matt Stowers, the coach of the 11U North, earlier this morning. And I said, hey, do you think we're going to have a rematch of last year's uh, championship? I go, you're up one nothing," And he's like, I hope so. <laughs> and so um, I really thought we were going to. But, I mean, the game's not over. It's only the second inning. But uh, if they keep adding runs like this every inning, they will chip away until they demoralize. That would probably a very tired 11U team right now. I know I'm exhausted from being in the sun and everything like that. I'm glad you guys are still joining. I can't believe how many are on right now. Uh, still no questions. I have a feeling you guys have a, you've asked me a bunch of questions, but I don't know which button to push, and there's nothing signaling me that you have asked questions. So I'll get my button um, organized next time when I do it live. Yeah, I'm not ending right now. I'm just saying I apologize to any of you guys asking me questions because it's not prompting me to look at them like uh, Facebook does so um, oh well sorry uh, keep keep in tune um, let's see here oh uh, like I said we got together two and a half years ago we play year-round um, the one thing we do we do take two weeks off for Christmas and New Year we take a week off for Thanksgiving um, uh, the very important thing that we've always done is we've taken January, we practice January, uh, we do not play any tournaments or games, and the most important thing is arm care. That's arm care month. Um, basically, from Christmas, you got those two weeks, and then January, it's basically seven weeks of no uh, pitching for any of our pitchers. There's no flat work, there's no uh, on the mound uh, pitching. It's all just regular. We go back to the fundamentals, the proper fielding, um, the short hops, the, the infield drills, uh, you know, where you're in uh, with a partner or three, three people doing the backhand drills, making sure palms down, elbow, foot behind the ball path, all that kind of stuff on a backhand. Um, so January is a very uh, fundamental, back to the fundamentals uh, basics for us. A lot of skull session. If you guys never heard that term, what that is, is that's when you sit down and you talk about scenarios and how you need to react to those. So um, what I'm gonna do for you out there is I'm I'm the hitting coach and I'm also the base steal and third base coach, which when I played, I stole bases. I just stole bases and you always steal off the pitcher. And any base stealer would be shaking his head up and down right now if they heard that out of my mouth. You rarely steal off the catcher you always steal off the pitcher. There's something the pitcher does, there's always something the pitcher does that you can glean if you pay attention. First thing a pitcher is, is lazy. And the reason why is because they are focused. Now, this is all pitchers. And at some point in the game, they will get into a cadence. If they don't already get into a cadence for their own way of pitching, if they get into a cadence, you count that cadence. The cadence is a rhythm. If it's two and a half, three seconds, he goes home. Two and a half, three seconds, he goes home. One and a half second, he come over. Longer than three seconds, he's coming over. Okay, so when you, as a base dealer, pick that up, you can get jumps before they even pick up their front foot. Adva that's advanced base stealing. But you, but you have to practice it at some point, and the best part is always in the game, all right? 
So as you're stealing off of pitchers, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to get picked off. And remember, if they throw over and you steal, just burn it to second base and slide. And if they tag you, that's fine. You don't want them tagging you out at first base. You always make them tag you out at the advanced base, okay? And I'm talking for you young kids right now. Um, of course, when you get to the 90-foot bases, they come over. That 90 feet is such a long distance that they will throw that ball. But you keep running until you see them catch it and then get in that pickle. Okay, so if you're a 90-foot baseball player, you book it. You hear ball over to first, just stare at that guy at second. When he catches it, look where his eyes go because if it's down and away and his eyes go down and away, he may want to deke you like he's going to catch a regular ball, get you a turn. If that ball goes into left field, that's on you. Okay, yeah, you're safe at first, but you could have had second. So make sure that they catch the ball. Make sure that they make attempt to catch the ball. It may flip away 8 to 10 feet. You still get second. So make sure you see that ball come over your head as you're booking it towards uh, second on the 90-foot bases, of course, not the 12 you. Um, so if you got any questions on base stealing, ask them. But you know what? I have a feeling because I think I, I, had a lot, I have a lot of you guys on here right now. Um, I'm sure some of you have asked questions. Um, but anyway, sorry about that. I'm sure there was probably a feature at the bottom of here I was supposed to punch my first time doing live when I do it again I will I will I will make sure that questions come through because that's what I was planning this whole live for but most of you have been watching my documentaries on the Southern Oregon General so you know I'm a long-winded person and I can talk and talk and talk and if you've been watching my podcast that's one of the rare situations where I don't talk and talk and talk I let the let the person I'm interviewing talk so um, but with that yeah base running remember you always steal it off the pitcher and so as a base stealer, if you want to become a really good base stealer, you always pay attention to the warm-up, okay? Uh, I've noticed, uh, especially in the 12U and down, when they, a lot of them will warm up in their set position, and that usually gives away um, something you can glean. So you young, uh, you 12U and down, I, well, any of you actually, 13U, 14U, 15U, here's the deal, if you want to, if you want to fool base runners, keep doing a high leg kick from your stretch. Because then when you got a base runner on, you got a side step, excuse me, slide step. Um, guys like me, I'd be paying attention, right? Because I'm the leadoff. I was the leadoff hitter for my teams. But uh, if you're the number two hitter and the leadoff gets on and you see that he does a slide step, well, hey, there's new information. And that's probably the first time you see it is in the live game scenario with a runner on first. So remember, this game within the game is a chess game between um, you and the pitcher. And as pitchers, you got to be smart. You got to quit being lazy because I eat you for breakfast when I played. Um, and that means being mentally focused and know that, yeah, you're being watched. But the people you got to remember who's watching you is your opponent and your base stealers. Okay, guys like me. So, um, you know, if you want to do your slide step during warm ups and practice it and you need to, fine. But if you don't need to, don't. You understand? Hide that from that first batter so that if you got a good pitcher-catcher combo, you're going to throw them out at second, and then the, then the third base coach is going to have to uh, – you got to free out, right? And then they're going to have to go, okay, who can and can't steal on this guy? Uh, maybe we're just going to do big secondaries, right? So at the first base position. Uh, but when the runner's at first, sorry. Um, let's see here. Uh for lefty pitchers, remember, when you break towards, uh, when you steal, you steal the same time a right-handed pitcher steals, when that front foot comes up, okay? So maybe you might be hearing this for the very first time. So if you get your lead, all right, and it's the first possible attempt over at the bag or home, um, usually what I always did is I always drew the first throw over, which I knew was going to be a check, a check. So um, what I would always do for a lefty, so pitcher, left-hand pitchers pay attention right now, especially 13, 14 year, okay, that are just learning your left-handed moves, you know, 45 degree angle, not breaking the plane with the bottom foot, etc. right? So as an advanced base runner, what, base stealer, here's what I would do. I get a huge lead. But my first reaction would be back to the back. He'd pick up that front foot. I'd bounce into like my pre-lead position 
And then if he came over, dive back into the back. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to induce that check throw, or even maybe there, if you're if you're a novice, it's uh, he got you to do your best one. Sorry, I I gleaned your best move. So, and I can determine that based off of what you, what you did in your move. Um, so, with that being said, my next pitch or my my ne the next so there was no pitch. It was just an attempt to pick me off. So then, what I do is I'd get my regular lead, and then I'd shorten it just a little bit to where you're like, okay, he's not going anywhere, right? So then he would go home, and I'd get information from there if I wasn't already in the first. Uh, if I wasn't down, if I, if our dugout was the first base dugout, I would have. I would see his go home position because I'd get out of the gate, and walk down, and this is what you do as base stealers. When you, that left-handed pitcher's up and you're in the first base dugout, you go out of that gate and you go down the line to where you could see him uh, from first base position because that gives you the information. That gives you more information. Okay, so you could see his normal slide step or his normal delivery home if he's doing it from the stretch. Okay, very important to see that. Uh, before you get on base if you can if you're in the third base box well you're not gonna see it until you get on base okay um, so what you can do right is so what I did is my if they pick tried to, if I drew the pick which was my intention so I could see either the check over to first or his quick pitch over to first um, then my second my second attempt is to get him to go home so I can glean that information and then I go okay now remember, what was my rule on stealing off a left-handed uh, pitcher? It's not my rule, it's every base runner's rule. When it, that front foot comes up, just like it is when the righty front foot comes up. So if he decides to come over, you're picked off, and then on 90-foot bases, it is what it is. But remember, when a pitcher decides to go home, they can balk, even a lefty. Uh, because if you decide to take off and he's geared up to go home mechanically in his mind, He's not coming over, okay? Um, at your 13, 14U, 15U, uh, pitchers will try and have uh, a toggle switch in their mind where I'm going home, if I see him leave, I'm coming to first. Um, you're gonna find really good pitching coaches going, leave it, leave it, because what's happening is you're taking the focus off the pitch home. But th listen to your coaches, don't listen to me on that. Uh, you 13, 14, 15Us. You, 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 you do the regimen your coach talks about, okay? Um, so you, you'll find out at 16, 17, 18, you're gonna, the, get, the guy's either going home or he's coming over first, and he's going to make that decision. Like when he comes into a stretch, should I come over? If the answer is no, he's going home. So when that front pitch, that front foot comes up, boom, you're gone. All right? So then there you go. It's just like a right-handed. It's no different. Just like a right-handed. He's just facing you. Um, but here's what I always did uh, that I got a lot of funny facial looks on is if I knew this pitcher and I hadn't done this trick to him, this is the trick I usually do. So if I know their move, I get a huge lead, okay? Uh, and you only do this one time on a pitcher. If you're playing high school ball and you did this on a pitcher, don't do it a second time because he knows he, he'll come over, all right? But this is what I did. I got a big lead, right? And you're going to steal because, hey, the catcher doesn't really have a cannon. He's got a good arm, but he doesn't really have a cannon. If you can get two strides on him before he lands that front foot, three, you're there. Um, and from him lifting his front foot, you get that big lead. You draw the throw. Then you come back out and you get a short lead. And he's like, he's not going anywhere. And he mentally commits home. And then if you know his cadence, right, if he's in his cadence, if he's a two and a half, then he goes home. A lot of times you can see it in the breathing. They like to exhale before they move. And if they exhale and they're in their cadence, two and a half, I'm gone before they even pick up their front foot. And when I, and if I do that, I do it for two reasons. One, I look right at their eyeballs. Their eyeballs get so big because when I see that, I know they're going home. And so I turn my head and burn. Because if you're looking at him or anywhere else, you're, you're not running as fast as you can. You better get those eyes on the outside third, outside three inches of that bag, okay, away from the throwdown coming from second. And uh, you slide right in there if it's, if it's there. Um, always assume the throw's there. Listen to your coaches and say, pass ball, stay up, stay up, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I'll get off the base stealing thing. Uh, let me turn around and look at this game here. It is...
That's a seven. Is that a seven? Is that seven runs? Yep. Holy smokes, they're up seven runs. Like I said, I had a feeling the Falcons were going to pull this one out with North being their third game and today and fourth game in two days. I think they're just tired. They're, uh, they're probably absolutely tired. Um, not to take away from the Junior Falcons, it's just, man, when you play three games in, under the hot weather and win like this, man, I mean, I don't even know what the Generals would do right now if we were playing our third game at 5 o'clock. I think it's about 84 with about 5 mile an hour wind. I know I'm exhausted just doing this live feed with you guys, so uh, I can't imagine what they're going through. Um, man, I can't, dude, we got a ton of people. All right, well, I'm going to probably cut this uh, short here in about three minutes. Um, I haven't seen any questions come across, but with this amount of people, I know you ask questions. I'm sorry. I think I have to hit a button down here. I will find out what that is. Um, but thank you for following me. I can't believe I have over 1,700 followers now. Um, I will do a live feed at the next tournament. I won't be doing one tomorrow, but I will definitely do a live feed at our next tournament, um, probably after Saturday pool play. Or if we have a nine, a two early games, I can do it uh, while the other games are playing. Kind of give you a breakdown on what we did. All right. Again, appreciate you following me. Uh, Travel Baseball Coach Justin, I'm signing off. Bye.